What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we spent a lot of time with Fi talking about how Luna potentially killed the old woman, and there were all the shenanigans going on with moving the different crates for the AB rooms to hide the blood spatter and the handkerchief, and we noticed that while we were talking about that, it was taking a really long time for Kay and Luna to return. And so roughly 20 minutes later than expected, Kay finally shows up, and we were going to ask them just what the heck is going on. And, well, here we are. Sigma. Fi. There you are. K. I'm sorry. I have some bad news. Luna. Luna is dead. What? Luna is dead? So, naturally, we think Clover did this, right? She's in room two in the crew quarters. However, there is the very real possibility that Kay killed her as well. The same room where Alice was murdered. Yikes. Oh, so I'm, I'm clicking through this. There's the bracelet. And there's Luna. This was the third time I touched a body and felt cold skin. So, a couple things that stand out. Um, there's the tranquilizer gun or injection gun there. Her bracelet's knocked off. Is this the same sort of dead body we found when she was dead in the other timeline? I forget exactly which timeline it was, but there was another one in which Luna died. Also, this music that's playing in the background right now is awesome. It's one of my favorites from this game. But anyways, wow, Luna's dead. Naturally, we think Clover did it, but it's not a guarantee. We still don't know where Quark is. K could have killed her. Is this going to be the everybody dies timeline? I thought it might get easier, but it only gotten worse. I didn't think I'd ever get used to it, but I didn't want to. My hands began to shake, and I tried to steady them as I pressed a pair of fingers to her neck to check for a pulse. Nothing, of course. Luna was dead. Her eyes were flat and empty, the pupils dilated in what could have been terror. It felt surreal. Like I might blink, and then she would sit up again. I'm also wondering if Luna was killed in this room, or if Luna was killed elsewhere and brought here. She would smile and blush and look away nervously, and everything would be alright. I blinked. She lay there, still, dead and pale. And I, I trust him. Grief cracked open like an egg, and rage clamored out, hot and angry and screaming. It clawed at the inside of my chest, and pounded at the back of my eyes. I squeezed them shut and ground my teeth. My hands balled into fists so tight they hurt. I took a deep breath and opened my eyes again. Another breath. I stood up and realized Kay was talking. I believe she was poisoned. See here? This device is some sort of syringe. I think it's called an injection gun. You can just put whatever you want in one of those vials and then pull the trigger. And then here's the question, right? What vial is in there? If it's... Oh, it could be that one drug that Dio had on him. It's kind of like the needles in these bracelets. The drug they used is the same as well. The label on the vial says tubocurarine. The muscle relaxants. Yes. Since it's empty, I can only assume Luna was injected with it. The skeptic in me says we can't guarantee, although that's clearly the likely picture here. Hmm, I would still want to investigate and see if there was any other modality in which Luna could have been killed just based on evidence, you know, from her clothes, from her body, etc. 
And somebody might have tried to set up the kill in such a way that, well, it looks like she was killed from the injection with this drug, but very well, the gun could have just been placed there. If somebody murdered her with the gun, it would be fairly odd for them to leave the gun with the vial behind, right? So it makes me think it's an intentional setup of some sort. You see the mark on her neck? I believe it is safe to assume that is where her attacker injected the drug. Okay, increasing the likelihood that that was the means of attack. It is possible that she was killed by some other means though, and injected slightly after. Perhaps they chose the neck for the carotid artery? Then your guess is probably correct. Luna was injected with tubocurarine and it killed her. What about the others? Should I go get them? No, never mind. Yeah, you'd have to find them and certainly wouldn't want you trying to find them alone. I want to get your story first. What do you mean? When you left us, you and Luna went off together, right? Yes. But when we talked to Dio downstairs, he said he'd only seen you, not Luna. Why is that? Luna and I split up as soon as we got to Floor B. We determined it would be more efficient. Two of us working separately could cover more ground in less time. Alright, so why were you late? What? You didn't show up till 20 minutes past the time we were supposed to meet. Sigma's asking you what you were doing. I was resuscitating. Uh, resuscitating? Let me explain how I found her. I had gone to the warehouse five minutes before our meeting time. You had yet to show up, as had Luna. I believe I was standing between the yellow and cyan doors. Hmm. I don't know. Can we trust what Kay is telling us right now? I don't know. I mean, there's no, there's nobody who can really speak to his actions right now. Some minutes later, I heard something. It came from behind the cyan door and sounded like a woman scream. Well, it was actually quite faint. It was several doors away, after all. And as such, I couldn't quite make out what was being said. Or even if I had heard it at all. It seemed entirely possible that I'd imagined it. I heard no other sounds for a few minutes following the scream. Eventually, the silence made me uncomfortable. Perhaps something had happened. So I made my way to the crew quarters. As I entered the hallway, I noticed that the door to room 2 was slightly ajar. Again, if somebody killed her, I find it very odd that they would leave the injection gun and then leave the door slightly ajar. If it's been some moments since the scream, right? All the killer would have had to have do had to do was inject Luna, and then once that injection was made, could run for it, right? Because at that point it spelled doom for Luna. So hmm. Again, I feel like everything is being set up. <laughs> That was when I first suspected something was amiss. 
You can imagine the rest, I'm sure. I ran into the room and found Luna on the floor. So you're saying you spent a good 20 minutes trying to resuscitate her? That's not actually far out of reasonable, but but it would be surprising if somebody on their own tried for 20 minutes. Yes. I deduced that she had been injected with, her, with tubocurine. Her heart had stopped, so I attempted CPR. To the best of my abilities, at least, with this mask, I was obviously unable to provide artificial respiration. Yeah, I mean, even then, that's not even really recommended anymore. You would need other equipment, which would be ideal. So, the odds were stacked against any sort of resuscitation. I don't... I think it's pretty suspicious that Kay tried for 20 minutes. Kay also has this armor, but doing chest compressions for 20 minutes would be incredibly tiring. I would be shocked if most people could do that, really. Why didn't you tell us? Because I had no reason to believe you would be in the warehouse. Agreed. If you weren't, I would have wasted precious time. I chose instead to begin resuscitation immediately. As you know, even a short time without oxygen can cause serious brain damage. I felt time was of the essence, but... Hey, so I think what Fai is going to ask here is, where are the signs of attempting to resuscitate her, right? So if somebody was doing CPR, and doing it correctly at least, you would expect the person to be lying flat on their back, and when you look, you would see some potential trauma to their chest. Um, and it might get a little bit invasive, but there's a chance you know you could even look and find broken ribs, right? So, and especially if you have Kay's hands, right, with the armor and everything, I would expect the the shirt the in her chest area to be a little bit more damaged um, than it is now. And again, still not her body lying twisted on the ground. I don't know if you know the game really accounted for all of that sort of thing, but. But that's definitely a suspicion running through my mind. How much time passed between when you heard the scream and when you came in here and found her? I'm afraid I can't say exactly, but I would hazard a guess that it was around three minutes. It couldn't have been more than eight, right? Um, because I think we showed up three or so minutes late. Did you see the killer? No, I did not. Then they had three minutes to escape. That would have been plenty of time. When you leave this room, immediately to your left is a door that connects to the hallway. I assume they left that way. Is there any chance they hid in this room somewhere? No. I examined the room thoroughly before I left to find you. Hmm. Um. May I say something? Yeah, sure. I'm not sure if this has anything to do with Luna, but there was something I wanted to point out. Look at Alice. Do you notice anything? Um, she's kind of hunched over. She doesn't have her bracelet, but we knew that already. Um... I don't notice anything off the top of my head. The weapon. It's gone? 
Oh, oh, I guess you're right. I guess the handle was a little bit tough to see before, but there's no weapon. Which is really interesting. Because maybe that means that weapon was what was used or, you know, uh, obscured by the handkerchief that we have. Indeed. The wound suggests a knife, but I doubt we'll know now. Then did the killer take it? How would I know? Maybe they took it before Luna was murdered. Why are you asking me? If they had it, why not use it to kill Luna? Hmm. Why is Fi so... I guess like we're just... In my impression is Sigma's just kind of thinking out loud asking the group so that we can work together. But Fi is... I guess interpreting them is very directed at her, which is a little bit suspicious. Yeah, that would make sense. What? Sigma, if you were going to kill someone, which of these two methods would you use? I wouldn't kill anyone. This is hypothetical. I would choose the injection gun. Right? Most people would choose that. The more you can divorce yourself from the actual killing, the easier it is to kill someone. There's a big difference between stabbing someone and injecting them with poison. Yeah, that's a fair point. So you're saying they took the knife before they killed her? The other thing is, well, I mean, an injection is a little bit more uh, easier, it's a little bit easier to obfuscate, right? You can inject in an area that's maybe not immediately visible, especially on uh, somebody who has long hair uh, with the neck and so forth. But, so I guess maybe what Fi is suggesting here is there are two different killers. So you're saying they took the knife before they killed her? No, I don't know either way. They could have taken it afterwards. There's no way for us to know. Could they have done that in the three minutes before Kate got here? It's not impossible. Three minutes is longer than you think. When was the knife taken? Because there's the handkerchief, which could have been used... Hmm. Or there's somebody who came in here to kill Luna, found Luna here, killed her, and then saw the knife and took that for a future kill, right? But probably isn't the person who killed Alice. The person who killed Alice, if they intended to use the knife for a future murder, likely would have just taken the knife out at the moment of killing Alice. Unless, of course, there was no way to hide that weapon. But, hmm. Anyway, what I was trying to say is that I don't know when they took the knife, or whatever it was. We came here to get Alice's bracelet, and then Kay came by later. There was probably about a 30 minute window. Anyone could have taken it. We do know that we talked to Clover in this area, didn't we? They might not even have been the same person who killed Luna. Or it could be. There really isn't any way to know. And if we don't know, we really shouldn't try and draw conclusions. That could color our reasoning, and that's not good. Conclusions without any evidence are useless. Oof, speaking, speaking strong words there, Fi. So just forget any conclusions you might have come up with. Save that brain space for something more useful. Well, I think that about covers it. We clear? Yeah.
Good. Anyway, you know, now that I think about it, it would be nice if we could take that red robe thing off of K, right? It's making it difficult, or I could easily see a weapon hidden underneath there. We should tell the others. About Luna, you mean? Yeah. We should go to the white doors then. Dio should still be there. Hopefully Temyoji and Clover will be there as well. I mean, they're probably going to end up there. We have less than 20 minutes until the white doors open. Yeah, good point. Once it's time to open that door, I'm sure they'll show up. Kay nodded and picked up Luna's bracelet. Please, take this with you. He held it out to me. I stared down at the bracelet. It felt wrong to just take it. Like we were just using and abandoning her. Is something the matter? You and Fire are the magenta pair. Without the green solo bracelet, you won't be able to open the secondary door. I know. It's just... Then... He pressed the bracelet gently into my hand. If you don't wish Luna's death to be meaningless, then you must survive. Or do you intend to die without catching her killer? It's a good point. Right. Yes. I sighed and closed my hand around the cold metal. Good, shall we go? Wait. Crap. Did something happen? No. Well, not yet. Huh. So that's awfully concerning. Part of it is because from the other timelines, we know that Fi is also having these premonitions, these, um, these images of the visualizations of things that happen in other timelines. Useful information. And so she must have just had one of something bad about to happen. Oh my goodness, this is totally the clover, like the clover bloodbath ending. <laughs> we might be looking at a worst case scenario. Uh, excuse me? God. What the heck is wrong with me? How did I miss this? I'm sorry. This is my fault. It's just, there was so much going on, I wasn't thinking. What? What is it, darn it? What did you miss? Quark. Yeah, no, Quark's been missing for a long time. The question is, where? Quark? Oh! Oh crap! Temyoji is a red solo. Clover's a cyan pair. Quark's the other cyan pair. If he's not with them, they can't get through the secondary door. Yeah. Exactly. Oh dear. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's really problematic. I don't know if it needed to be as dramatic of a realization as that. This is bad. And if they haven't gotten in by the time the primary door shuts, they'll be penalized. If we haven't found Quark by then... Time! How much time do we have left? It's maybe like 10 minutes. Four minutes?! What? I mean, the, the reality though is there is the possibility that Temyoji and Clover have already found Quark. There's the very real possibility that Clover's already found Quark and killed him for the sake of it, right? Oh no. Let's just go to the warehouse on floor B. Perhaps Quark has already been found. I sure hope so. Let's move. 
Do you think Quark was maybe hidden in one of those treatment pods? Or something like that? That's one of the only things I can think of. I don't even remember if uh, the characters have had access to that room in this timeline. I guess we'll find out eventually, when I review the flowchart. I feel like we're coming to a conclusion of some sort. Things are certainly tense. Alrighty. So we've made it to the warehouse. The real question is, who else is here? If anyone. Wow, so we got here just as the doors opened. So it took us four minutes to get here. Chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. You're late! What the heck were you thinking? You trying to kill me? What about Quark? What? Did they find Quark? I like what I know. I've been here. Look, forget about him. Where's Alice's bracelet? So, interesting that Dio showed up, I guess later than we did initially, but actually stayed here, presumably, right? I'm, I, I would not peg Dio to be the type of person to wait half an hour for everybody else to show up. Did he really have nothing better to do? But I mean, if he were the killer and the other people weren't here, he would have no idea of where everyone else was and couldn't freely go about doing things. Hmm, unless he had a really good excuse in mind for why he was, you know, out and about and ran, ran into people. I guess he could just say that he was looking for people because he had been waiting for quite some time. I don't know, but he doesn't seem to know about Luna's death. Which one of you has it? What about Temyoji and Clover? Have they come back yet? Look around, Baka! What do you think? Uh... Hey! Pay attention, the bracelet! Do you have Alice's bracelet? Hand it over! It's awfully aggressive. I can understand being pretty upset after waiting however long for people to show up and then, well, showing up literally at the last minute. And then, of course, only having a few minutes before you potentially die because you can't enter a door because somebody else doesn't do something for you. Fi pulled it out of her pocket. The face still shone with blue light. This had been Alice's bracelet. Fi's eyes never left Dio's as she carefully handed the bracelet to Kay. Good. Let's go. Hey, what is this? What, you don't like this door? Fine, we can take a different one. As long as we're in the right group, it shouldn't matter which door we take. That's not the issue. Then please tell me, what the heck is the issue? Being a human being. Three of us still haven't arrived. If we leave them behind... Oh, come on. Now you're gonna grow a heart? If you stay here, you're gonna kill me. But... Uh-oh, this is not looking good. Three minutes remain until chromatic doors close. I bet it's gonna be like one minute left and then Sigma's gonna have a flash that's like, wait, I recognize or I remember where they are. And we have to, of course, you know, figure it out from some other timeline. All right. Fine. I'll be honest with you. The truth is, I've got a kid, a baby. I was told that if I didn't win this game, my kid's as good as dead. That's... You have to trust me. I swear. 
It's the truth. Zero told me to keep it under wraps, but... I figure I don't have a lot of choice right now. You might not have a lot of, have a lot of choice, but there are two questions I have. One, if Zero told you to keep it under wraps, surely you're going to be punished for saying it now, right? And so that questions the validity of, or the truthfulness, the truthfulness of that statement. The second of which is, well, what was it going to be? <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say, Rip. Um, I had two problems with that. Hmm. I guess maybe it'll come back. I'll tell you more once we get inside. Please. It's a lie. Don't listen to him. I wanted to scream. He was obviously lying, but it looked like Hay was buying it. But he had to go in. I couldn't try and stop him. If I did, they'd both die. You have to believe me, Kay. Please. If you won't do it for me, do it for my kids. If I lose, it's all over. So, okay, here's the other thing. We know that Dio killed the woman. Oh wait, yeah, that's right. We know Dio killed the woman, right? Did he admit to it in the other timeline? <laughs> I can't even believe it took me this long to remember that. We went through all this speculation about how Luna killed the woman and everything going on with the crates, but I had forgotten that Dio confessed to killing the woman in the other timeline. I will say, that doesn't guarantee that Dio killed her in this timeline, right? Different timeline, same woman, could have been killed by two different people because they're two different timelines. How does that complicate things, right? If Dio did all of that, if Dio hid the weapon, Dio had the handkerchief, Hmm, and Dio hid the body in there, and then moved the crates to make it seem like Luna, to, to frame Luna of some sort? That would be intense. But, um, that isn't, I don't think that's even what I was uh, going for initially. What I was going to say is that we know from a different timeline that Dio tried to get into this game. Dio killed the woman so that he would have a bracelet to participate in the game. I find it very odd that Zero would reach out to Dio who's not already a participant, and tell Dio that if he didn't participate and win the Zero in the Nonary game, uh, his kid would die, right? So I think it's fairly clear, especially for the player, that he's lying here. Please. Kay turned to look at me and Fi. We both nodded silently back. I understand. Let's go. It also says a lot about Dio's personality and his values that he's not concerned at all about where Luna is, right? Dio knows that if he doesn't get through that door with Kay and Alice's bracelet, he's dead. But he's not in the slightest concerned about what's going to happen with Phi and Sigma, right? Knowing that Luna's not here. He either knows that Luna's not coming and doesn't care, or he just doesn't care to even ask where Luna might be. Really? Yes. I have one condition, however. A condition? Yes. But it's not for you, Dio. Sigma, I want you and Phi to go into one of the doors as well. Huh? Dio and I cannot be the only survivors. I would have the two of you join us. That is my condition. Darn it. Couldn't make this easy, could you? I'm shocked that he's not even asking about Luna. What do you say? The decision is yours. No. I can't do that. You're asking me to leave three people to die. Use your head for once! You're going to get us killed! Is that what you want, Sigma? I can't just leave them behind! You kind of have to, though. Me either. Really, Fi? Really? That... This is a real surprise. 
If we go through that door, there are four people that survive to the next round. If we don't go through that door, everybody dies. I agree with Sigma. We can't just ditch them. But it's not like we're doing anything to help find them, right? I'm staying. Fine. The only thing I can think of, because this seems so illogical to come from Fi, right? Is that she's trying to push Dio to his limit. And see if Dio is just going to pull out a knife and try to kill Kay or something like that to get his bracelet and go through the door. That's the only thing I can think of. Or... Well, nah, I don't even know. Bunch of idiots. One minute remains until chromatic doors close. I see. I suspected that would be your answer. Really? You leave me with no choice then. My apologies. Huh? What's Kay about to do? He attacks them and forces them through a door, potentially? You have my sympathy. I wish there was another way. Why? Do you actually believe Dio? No, of course not. I only wish to save you. If I had not forced the issue, neither of you would have budged. Such is your character. Kay, what are you doing? I confess I am not entirely sure. I will think about it during the 10 seconds that remain. What? Goodbye. Kay turned and left, quickly disappearing outside of our door. Fi and I lay on the floor moaning, curled around our aching stomachs. So it sounds like Kay attacked both of them, knocked them either unconscious or just rendered them immobile by some means, and then quickly brought them to the door where their bracelets were scanned, threw them through the door, and then is maybe in the last 10 seconds going to try to get through the door with Dio? Chromatic doors closing. Not quite able to walk yet, Fi and I crawled out of the secondary door. The punch Kay had given me had in been incredibly powerful, and my arms and legs still felt numb and tingly. Can you stand? It is worth documenting, right? That Kay has such, you know, physical capabilities. Ah. Yeah. Can we just sit here for a moment, though? My body's going to be fine, but... I think I need a little time to get my feelings sorted out. Yeah, so I mean... This basically confirms that... Temyoji, Clover, and Quark... Are dead. Right? I nodded, and we sat there in silence. No matter what I did, I couldn't get their faces out of my head. Temyoji, Clover, Quark... I hoped they were alright, somehow, but I wasn't sure how much time had passed before Five finally stood up. Iko. We should go. And that was it. She turned and headed for the end of the hallway, feet dragging as if she were carrying something heavy. And she is. It was a moment or two before I followed. So where will this take us? Security. Is this our first time going beyond the white doors? I think it is, actually. So this is a whole new area. Security. Why would there be a security room here? What are we going to find in here? Did you see the plaque on the door? 
I'm also wondering, we still haven't figured out the mystery of how people are accessing doors for rooms that we haven't even unlocked yet, right? In that one timeline, somebody had been to Gollum's Bay before we had gotten there. I don't even remember what we found in there. What did we find in there? Because somebody broke in there and stole whatever it was from the safe, right? But anyways, did you see the plaque on the door? Yeah. It said security. The footage from the surveillance cameras might run through here. Does that mean we'll be able to see what's going on in the rest of the facility? I'm not sure. Hopefully, that would be a really powerful tool. Right now, all the screens are dark. Even if we could activate them, I doubt Zero is just going to let us watch whatever we want. Yeah, I'm just... I'm worried about them. We don't know what happened to K and Dio either. Yeah, well, let's see what we can do here. Okay, so here we are in the security room, and we've got ourselves a new puzzle, a new escape room. I don't want to look at the flowchart because, well, we clearly still have a lot to experience in this timeline, but when I do have the chance to go back to the flowchart, I definitely want to look at the different timelines and refresh on all the different events, because we've experienced quite a few at this point, and each of them has little bits of information, and oh, I, I can already tell this, this timeline is probably a dooms route where everybody's going to die, and I don't know, I don't know, very, very despairful. But uh, this music for the security room is really cool. I am looking forward to solving this puzzle, as I'm sure you guys are. But of course, that's going to be taking place in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a really tense one. There was a lot that went on, right? We went directly from speculating about Luna being a murderer, having completely forgotten that we got Dio's confession in a different timeline, uh, to Luna's death, right? Much like it occurred in a different timeline. But we have potentially different events that lead up to it. So what are the similarities, right? How could the death still have taken place despite the differences between those timelines? That should reveal, I guess, what was necessary or, you know, essential for that murder to actually happen. And what about Alice's death? That unsolved mystery, right? Yeah, I don't know. I'm really confused. What happened to Temyoji and Clover? We never saw them again. Did they die trying to find Quark? Did Quark kill them? So many mysteries, so many mysteries. I'm so curious. But anyways, until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.